I've got a feeling that the next puzzle is going to be very challenging. So let's just jump right to it. Oh my god, we're here! Is this some kind of toy box? All right. Well, we can rotate all of these pieces. Doesn't really... Okay. We can move them, we can rotate them, we can place them. Can't place it on the middle or it's going to yell at us not to. So it's going to complain if we put it somewhere we can't put it. But it looks like we pretty much need to fill up this entire region with the pieces available us to both sides. All right. Oracle, please have something to say. Always regard each part of your plan as unique as each citizen of each house. This karyam reveals the assembly of the planners. Two years of Kandra's portions must be combined in these dimensions. When I said say something, I meant say something intelligent. Or at least helpful. Maybe that was intelligent. Who am I to know? Okay, both sides seem to have the same number of pieces. And if I mess with these... All right. Those two pieces are kind of opposing each other. Let's get these out of the way. Um, hmm. Can't really flip them. We can rotate them, though. So we have two identical ones of this and uh, one... Oi, don't rotate. And then one that's kind of a black sheep of the family. We also have two of these, both in opposing directions. We can't flip, so we can't bring one to look like the other one. We can only seem to rotate. And we have 12 pentominoes of yellow and 12 of blue. And let's take a look at the ones on blue side. They're the same. It's not a mirror image of each other. They're the same exact pentomino. If it was a mirror, we'd have had two of those ones that kind of lip at the bottom, but we don't. There, it's a complete identical set of pentominoes. Um, um, well, the, the best way to solve this is, you know, to... This is going to be a long, long week. Here is our entire board, and we have to fit all of the pentominoes onto this board such that none overlap. If you ever played with pentominoes when you were younger, this is essentially a pentomino packing problem. Or if you're computer science-y, this is a concrete puzzle based on the concept of the exact cover problem. Feel free to ignore that last sentence. The first thing we should do is actually listen to the oracle. One of the things he said was, two years of Kondras portions must be combined in these dimensions. Um, I'm not sure exactly who Kondras is, but the number two there... It's, I guess you could kind of think of it as one year, two year, half, half, maybe. <laughs> because we have two sides, and both sides have the same number and same type of pentominoes. With this in mind, we may be able to segregate a left and a right side. Solving one should be able to solve the other. But this isn't going to be a mirror situation. Notice the darker line going through the middle? That's where I am splitting. The idea will be solve half and then rotate that half onto the other half. There are 120 squares in total. Needing to accept 24 pentominoes, said pentominoes are split into two identical portions of 12. So we split the board into two identical portions of 60. 
we need to have a number of squares divisible by 5 for any subsection we wish to solve, by the way. Everything in the game points to doing a natural split like this. Given that one side has yellow, one side has blue, and otherwise they're identical. Um, as we saw before, they are identical exactly. They're not mirror images of each other. That's important. We're not mirroring, we're rotating. Solving one section of 12 pentominoes is much easier than solving one section of 24. It's not just double the effort. The level of backtracking we would need if we had happened to replace pieces the wrong way that are not part of any solution, and there are multiple solutions, would be quite large. It is so much easier to solve a smaller state space. Now, on to rotation. Let's say I have this piece here. This piece will be referred to as W. Now, we have an identical W piece in the other set. This is what I mean by rotation. Whatever we solve here can be rotated to solve the other side. As we remember, we, while we cannot mirror or flip pieces, we may rotate them. First, try to solve the area most constricted after selecting a piece. In this example, we have some randomly chosen pieces. The top right yellow piece is an L. The blue piece is a V. If it was sitting on the corner and with both sides facing upwards, it would be a V. And the last piece is an F. I will call that F standard because we have another F that is a flipped version of that. Now we have another pentomino called P. It fits here rather nicely, but we can notice something right away that will tell us that P cannot under any circumstances go there in this configuration, or in any configuration that would cover the same squares that are currently covered. Any piece we put to cover that little section over there must pass through this point, which means it must cover those other three squares or we are going to have an uncoverable section quite clearly. The only other piece that fits this section would be another uh, piece of type P. Remember, we have to use only the pieces that are part of a single set of 12 to solve one side. If we borrow the duplicate from the other side, we will ruin the piece symmetry and will not be able to use our rotation trick, so we know this won't work. Earlier, I mentioned divisibility by 5. Let's say you wanted to tackle this problem in the following way. Split it down the middle with a few pieces such as these. Now, is this okay? Is a solution possible like this? No idea. But we can determine if solutions aren't possible. If we end up splitting the board into two unconnected subsections, we must make sure that at least one subsection is a multiple of five, as in it contains enough squares that add up to be a multiple of five. We only need to check one, because if it is a multiple of five, since the piece is already covered, it must be a multiple of five, then the other section must be a multiple of five, because math. Okay, let me explain. A multiple of 5, in this case this 60 squares in total, minus another multiple of 5, in this case the pieces covering the squares, the pieces covering the squares are themselves multiples of 5, minus another multiple of 5, which is the size of the section we calculate, would be another multiple of 5. So we only need to check one, this is a roundabout way of saying we only need to check one of the subsections. And if, it, if it's good, then everything is good. Unfortunately, right now, we violate that. We have 21 squares on the bottom. It is simply not possible for this to work. There is no point in even bothering if we can fit four pentominoes down there and have a square left over no matter what. Let's try a different piece. Okay, this works better. The bottom has 25 squares now. Will this lead to a solution? No idea. This heuristic can't actually tell us that any position will lead to a solution. All we can do is determine if we are heading down a path that cannot possibly have a solution. We are going to start having pieces that look like they can't really fit. What we want to do is we want to pick a piece that looks really difficult to fit and try to fit it in. 
as opposed to going for the pieces that look like they can fit in well. The logic here is that once you get to a small enough space, you can quickly determine if you're completely screwed by trying to see if you can fit in the most difficult to place piece. And if you can't fit it in in any way that lets you put the other pieces around it, then you know that you need to backtrack. In this example, I'm going to try to place the Z piece, the piece at the top, somewhere in that top section. And on the right side are the pieces that I have left. I can see that certain positions cannot work immediately because I just don't have a piece that will fit one of the more cramped spaces properly without leaving little holes open. I like the Z piece for this because it only has two unique rotations. Because of its symmetrical design, it has less unique forms than any other piece, all of which have four. Remember, we can't do flips. We can only do rotations. All this is nice, but the controls in this game can be annoying. What if we want to move an entire section of the board? What if we want to quickly rotate and move around smoothly? What if the cursor, unfortunately, as you're clicking, accidentally rotates when you didn't mean to? Awful. Thankfully, pentominoes are like a real thing. So, I actually got myself a pentomino set. Five sets of 12 pentominoes each. In fact, we have 12 pentominoes in the actual puzzle, but actually not all of them. Uh, we're missing three, but we'll get to that later. I think this is a good opportunity actually to showcase what I meant by flipping versus rotation. In the actual puzzle, you're not allowed to flip. You're only allowed to rotate. Take this orange one and take this yellow one. What I'm going to do is for the orange one, I'm going to flip it. For the yellow one, I'm going to rotate it. Watch this. Flip. Now for the yellow one, I'm going to rotate it. Notice how I can make the same orientation, the same pentomino, um, by just rotating this. So in this case, it doesn't matter that we can't flip because we can always make the same thing with the rotation. But that's not for every piece. All right, look at the orange one and the yellow one. Once again, the orange one, I'm going to flip, and the yellow one, I'm going to rotate. They're not the same. The little notch is kind of off-center now, and that's a big problem because in the puzzle, we actually have both of these pieces. Because we can't actually flip, they might as well be two different pieces. We can only rotate, so we have these, yeah, they're just two completely different pieces. When it comes to these kinds of uh, pieces, it's, I've encountered so many instances where I almost solved the puzzle, and the last remaining five squares were in an orientation that could easily be filled if I just flipped the remaining piece I had. There's uh, really not much worse than having that happen to you, but that's something to be aware of. The only piece that's truly duplicated is the end piece, which is this one. In this puzzle, in this puzzle, we have three of these. Two of them are in the exact same orientation. The other one is all like that. So, yeah. So what's the best way of approaching this? Well, the controls in the game were annoying me to the point where a ruler, a pen, and pencil fixed the entire problem. And yes, I actually went to a coffee shop with a set of pentominoes and worked on this for a good couple bloody hours. And I wrote a Python script to solve as many solutions as it could. I learned a lot more about pentominoes than I really, really, really wanted to. Also, in case you're wondering, since we have a duplication of one of these, well, a duplication of the same um, style, even if it's not the same exact piece because of the aforementioned lack of isomorphisms, and because we have three of these, we are missing uh, three pentominoes. There are three pentominoes, 
that just don't appear in this puzzle. And it would be sad if you never got a chance to meet them. Here's the X. Lonely and dead. Here's the, um, here's a thing that I'm sure a lot of people who play Tetris would be happy with. And finally, here's the guy that kind of wanted to be an L, but got knocked in the head over here. This is actually a Y piece. But, um, yeah, those, whoops. Those pieces are not going to appear in this puzzle, which is funny because this puzzle actually has 12 uh, pentominoes on both sides. It's just not all of the pentominoes. All right, let's actually solve this thing. Right now, I have all the pieces laid out in their correct orientations. I can't really see these very well, but I've uh, mapped them out and I made sure they're oriented properly so that, remember, we can't flip the pieces. So, um, for example, these two pieces here are mirrors of each other. So what's a good way to start? Well, unfortunately, well, obviously just to let you know, this is going to be a rehearsed um, solution that I already have. I'm not going to actually physically try to solve it now knowing nothing because that would take hours and that would be incredibly boring. But I'll go over some of the other things I mentioned in real time now. I think, but there is one other thing I didn't mention yet, and that's initial piece placements. When I uh, made my Python program and had it start generating solutions, it got to about nine unique solutions within 12 hours, which is because I don't actually know Python very well on how to use the concurrency libraries. Um, but the point is, a lot of those solutions have something very interesting in common. They all had, or most of them, had this piece and this piece, L and V, together. And right up here, there were so many solutions that had them. And it makes sense because while the rest of this puzzle is very crooked, these sides here are very straight. And because we can't flip pieces, these are orientated in such a way that they really just fit well together in the corner and leave you a nice rest of the puzzle to work with. Um, of course, that is the benefit of hindsight, knowing that there's several solutions that work well with this. If you didn't, you might be like, okay, I'm going to put these here, and I don't know if they're actually in the right position or not. Um, so you don't have that really safety net. But nevertheless, I think, you know, there is, there was a logical reason for doing it this way when I started before I generated those solutions, and I had done this. And in fact, the actual walkthrough for, the, for Jules the Oracle um, online has a solution that uses this construction. That won't be the same one that I'm going to use for this particular solution. Um, but it does illustrate an important concept that these two together really just work well. Um, another thing that works well um, is this and this. Both of these work nicely down on the other corner. The Z really fills this area in, and the T also fills this area in. Now, I like the T better, and it turns out that I might have been right when it comes to how solvable it makes things um, because it hits the edge here a little bit better and when I one of the things I first thought of when I approached this was like okay I want to fill up the edges here because they're straight lines and there's not and a lot of these pieces seem to be geared towards fitting around curves like over here so if I could get the straight pieces out of the way there would probably be a more success. But anyway, what's nice here is that you can start with your own constructions here. For example, um, I would want to finish this side off, so I would put this end 
here and then from here there's several several different places you can go now the place that would give a solution would be um, this piece here but let's say I didn't do that let's say that I was practicing this out and I was like okay um, I can put this here and then I guess I can put this here to fill that out and I'll be like okay wait a minute okay there we go I need to fill this space in and these are the pieces that I have remaining and this is the only piece that will work so I already know ahead of time if I'm gonna use this this has to be here and now I have five pentominoes remaining and I have this subsection to fill in so what am I gonna do I found the easiest thing to do is actually to take a random piece I prefer this piece because there's only two unique orientations rotate this twice and you've got the same bloody thing the only other piece that has fewer rotation fewer orientation fewer unique orientations is the X piece and that's not appearing in this puzzle so that means I have to think less with this whatever if this is leading to a solution then we know that all these pieces are going to have to fit in this area so take the piece that's it seems hard to fit and try to put it somewhere if you can't find a place to put it that works then you know it won't work like there'll be no solutions there because the piece has to go somewhere so I started this orientation that won't work as this square is a little empty here um, this is opening up a little bit and the problem with this is that the only way to fill these four is to pass through here but once you pass through here you cut off this section so there's really no way to work in this area um, whoopsies so let's go down here I guess I can fit there nicely um, and then we can try solving from there this piece and try to fit it somewhere so this will leave a hole open that will, that, this will leave three squares open here which is not going to work out properly um, this will leave six squares here and a lot of bisections so that's not going to work that's not going to work either so I'm going to rotate it that doesn't really fit that doesn't really fit neither does that um, yeah so I would realize that can't really fit this anywhere and I know it has to be somewhere if it's going to be part of a solution so I would say that this orientation doesn't work and then I'll go on and on and on and then if I found that none of them worked I would remove one of the pieces and I'd be like okay if I remove this piece there's no other piece I can fill this area I have to remove another piece so I might remove say this piece and see if I can fill the remaining opening with different pieces and then do the same thing and if that doesn't work remove another piece and then so on and so forth now after working with this for a while I haven't really found a good foolproof way of like approaching it with a hundred percent success or even a high degree of success it seems to come down to luck on which pieces you choose um, to place in which areas and if they turn out to not be part of a solution then it's gonna be a while before you finally get back there and put it somewhere else having said that I will say that my program may have only generate nine solutions but well, in the time I gave it but those nine solutions involved constantly taking uh, this piece here and trying it like trying all the solutions with the orientated here orientated here orientated here and so on and so forth and the furthest it got was like down here so there's still all these places and then all the other rotations so and there's, there was only um, like for example there was only one place where it didn't really have a solution with this um, well there are two places actually um, and both of them have interesting properties to them so if I, if I start by placing this here we can immediately know 
that there's no way that this can lead to a solution. And the reason we know is because the area up here cannot be filled in properly. The uh, block we have for filling in shapes like that is not oriented right. Remember, we can't flip it. No, that's a no. Can't if the orientation it's in is going to be like this. And all the other pieces would, as we said before, it has to pass through any pentomino that would fill these four, um, would have to also fill this area here. So there's only one type of block that really fills this area. We don't have that block, so we already know this won't work. Having said that, my program also tried with this orientation, never found a solution with, with any, any solution that had the F piece in this orientation. And this is a lot more reasonable of an orientation. There's a lot more you can do from it, a lot more you can branch out from it. So what that tells me is that if I want to start, another thing that you could do instead of just like starting with the corners and edges like I did with this is to maybe start in the middle with a piece and see if it really works there. And if it does, there's a good chance it might be part of a solution. That might be another way of approaching it. Um, I haven't actually really tested that one myself too much. Um, but as is indicated by the fact that no, there are no solutions for the piece in this position, um, you can end up on a pretty big wild goose chase um, if you have a very bad initial placement. And from there, it's mainly just do it. It's mainly just brute force. Find, use all these techniques for quickly eliminating. That's the main thing you're trying to do, is you're trying to eliminate things that you know aren't going to work, and then hope after you keep eliminating enough of them in large enough quantities, quickly enough, you'll eventually reach that one thing that does work. And another part of it might just be geometrical thinking. I'm, I'm probably not good at it. To be honest, I mean, um, this puzzle took me a very, very long time to do anything. In the end, I ended up running to uh, writing a Python program um, to deal with it. That's how badly it kicked my ass. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the solution that I will actually be using for this puzzle will be actually the one in state, and I'm going to call it standard form because it uses something that appears in a lot of solutions. But these here, this block here, the, um, where does Z go? There it is. The Z block here, and the, this, uh, I think I forgot the name of this block here. This moves up this side, covers this area, and then we have this F piece here and that is covered with this and at this point I can probably just solve it by sight alone. This really is the only thing I can fit there and this covers up this top area and um, this covers up this. So this will be our final solution. I know it's rather difficult to see the uh, cuts here but hopefully the uh, beautifully rendered SV G image on the side should help showcase the solution. And remember, we've solved the entire puzzle. This is only half. And now it's the other half.
there are probably many more ways to solve that, many more possible solutions, maybe some really crazy, cool, mathematical ones. Unfortunately, I don't know any of them. But it doesn't mean they don't exist. Hopefully what I've done here can be a good guide for trying to come up with your own solution to this puzzle. The tasks resolved so far marked here are 15. 